This is the Proton Guru video practice for topic 1.7. These problems will give you practice on resonance. Some brief and straightforward reading to get you ready for these problems can be found in the Organic Chemistry 1 Primer 2018 in Lesson 1.7. You can also find additional chemistry videos and information on how to match these videos with your particular course's textbook at protonguru.com. One of the important skills to develop in learning how to do resonance properly is displayed by this problem. Indicate whether each proposed resonance arrow blow is allowed or not when you're trying to draw resonance contributors. Well, there are a few things that you are not allowed to do when you're trying to do resonance structures. A curved arrow showing resonance cannot result in more than an octet of electrons around any of the second row elements like carbon or nitrogen. You never want to push more electrons towards an atom that is already negative. A negative charge will repel electrons. You never want to pull electrons away from an atom that already has a positive charge. A positive charge wants to pull electrons towards it. And if you're talking about resonance, you're not allowed to break sigma bonds. And since these rules have to do with sigma bonds and non-bonding electrons, we better fill in all of the missing hydrogens and lone pairs that aren't always drawn in these line bond structures so that we can accurately assess the situation. So I've done that here, and one of these structures clearly is breaking this sigma bond here. So that's certainly not allowed. Another one of these structures clearly pushes electrons towards an atom that's already negative, and that's also not allowed. So now that we've gotten rid of those obvious not allowed resonance structures, let's take a look at what would happen if we tried to move electrons around according to the other suggested curved arrows. So take a look at these and see if you can identify that one of these at the top here, these ones we haven't considered yet, is a clear violation of the octet rule. And that's because if we were to move electrons like this and create a new pi bond here, like this curved area suggests, we would get five bonds or 10 electrons in the valence shell of that carbon. And that's certainly not allowed. And this really illustrates why it's very, very important to draw the hydrogen atoms in. If we go back to the original problem, say we hadn't drawn those hydrogen atoms in, it might look pretty reasonable to draw that as an additional resonance contributor, forgetting the fact that there are three hydrogens here. But that's quite important for figuring out that this is not a viable curved arrow. It doesn't represent a real movement of electrons. Now these other two only represent the movement of pi bonding electrons. You don't have any violations of any of the rules for arrow pushing to make new resonance contributors. Next, let's try to identify whether each of these pair of compounds represent a legitimate pair of resonance contributors or not. If two structures are valid resonance contributors to the same structure, you can't have any changes in sigma bonds. I can't make or break new sigma bonds. And I can only move pi bonds and non-bonding electrons. Based just on that, a couple of these are clearly not valid resonance contributors to the same structure because you've got sigma bonds that are different in comparing them. So if I compare this one to this one, I've got a sigma bond to a hydrogen from this oxygen in this case, but not in the other. So those can't be resonance contributors of each other. And this one here, I don't have a sigma bond here, but I do in this other structure in the pair. So those two are the easiest to identify as being incorrect resonance contributors. Now the next thing we need to do to check out these less easily observed cases are to fill in the missing lone pairs and H atoms and the line bond structures on those carbons that might be missing, at least for the atoms that are involved in moving bonds around. Now it'll be a lot easier to see whether we have any changes in sigma bonds. And there is one case here where you have some clear changes in sigma bonding. And that shows up right here, where you have only two hydrogens on this positively charged carbon here, but the same carbon in the proposed resonance contributor has three hydrogens. So there's no way that those two are actually resonance contributors of each other. Again, illustrating why it's very important to fill in the hydrogens before you make your assessment. Now, the three remaining proposed pairs of resonance contributors show only movement of pi bonds and non-bonding electrons. And I filled in the curved arrows to show how these structures interconvert back and forth to demonstrate resonance delocalization. Here's another relatively common type of question you see on a multiple choice test. All of these are resonance contributors to the same structure, except for which one? And again, there are two very easy checks you can do to assess whether any pair or set of structures are resonance contributors of one another. You check for the sigma bonds, as we have in the past couple examples, 
and then you also can check to see if all the structures have the same overall charge. In this case it's very easy to check for the charge because all of these have just one cationic site on the molecule. So yes, all the structures have the same overall charge. I don't violate any charge balancing rules. Now I have to check to see if I have any sigma bond changes, which are not allowed in residence contributors to the same structure. So we've got to fill in the missing hydrogen atoms again. If we do that, you should take a look at these structures and see if you can assess and find any changes in sigma bonding. Well, all of these structures have a chlorine and a hydrogen on this carbon, except for this one. You also have only one hydrogen in all these structures, except for, again, this structure. Because you've got a change in sigma bonding, uh, this structure is not a valid resonance contributor to the same structure represented by the other contributors. Another type of skill involved in resonance in these types of courses will be something like this, where you're given the curved arrows and you're asked to provide missing resonance contributors for each of the initial structures. And you've got to show all the non-zero formal charges, just as you would in any curved arrow mechanistic type question. Now if you've watched the Proton Guru video practice for lesson 1.5, you know that the first thing you should do is to mark the bonds to be made or broken. So let's go ahead and do that. So I've crossed out all the bonds that are going to be broken. I'm taking the curved arrow and moving electrons away from those bonds. And anywhere I'm pushing electrons, that pair of electrons will become a bond. So I've indicated to myself with this visual clue of a dotted line where the new bonds will have to be in my structures. So I'm going to draw the other resonance contributors. I'm initially going to leave the formal charges off, where literally all I've done is not drawn that double bond there, because I saw that that bond broke, that second bond there. And I've drawn in the bonds that I said would be formed. And I've done that in all the cases. You can pause the video and take a look and confirm that that's the case. Now I've got to keep track of where the hydrogen atoms are in these line bond structures when I go to assign the formal charges. When I go and assign the formal charges, for example, this carbon had a change in its bonding, so I filled in the hydrogen on that one. The carbon here has a formal charge of zero because it has four bonds. This carbon up here is now a positive one because although it started with four bonds, has no hydrogens, now a carbon with only three bonds is a plus one charge. And all the other formal charges are assigned just as we discussed in the video practice for lesson 1.1. Perhaps the most challenging type of problem is one where we're shown some structures and we need to provide all of the possible resonance contributors that are reasonable contributors to the same structure as the one we are provided. A couple of things we need to recognize that will really help us through this type of problems. First, if there's a cation, as in these three examples, and that cation can be moved around, we usually move one arrow at a time or one pair of electrons at a time. And we know what direction the arrow is going to point because positive charges pull electrons towards them. So let's go ahead and fill in the first arrow. If we take and move this pair of electrons here, we'll be moving this double bond away and moving, create a new bond there. Likewise, if we look at this second case, we see a positive charge here. It has to be adjacent to a pi bonding site to do the resonance. One arrow moving towards the plus charge. Same thing here, one arrow moving towards the plus charge. So here I draw the resulting contributors in this second column here that result from moving those electrons as shown. Now we still have a cation and it's still adjacent to a pi bond here. We've already moved this pi bond once. We're going to move this other pi bond. We can get another structure. Now an interesting thing happens here. You can move lone pairs or pi bonds. So if I consider moving the electrons that I show with this blue arrow, I can get a structure that I show in blue, but I could instead move the lone pair towards that plus charge. So those are two separate cases. I'm going to draw the green arrow's product here and the blue arrow's product up here. Now I have a positive charge here in this structure, and you look adjacent to it and find this pi bond, move one arrow. And what are the products of those? So if we move the electrons as shown, we get the products shown here. Now in the case of this final example, we have one more pi bond we can push towards that positive charge, and that gets us to this very last contributor to the overall structure for that set of contributors. Now let's think about what would happen if we were asked the same type of question but with anionic structures. Well, the pattern we'd like to recognize here is that when we're moving an anionic charge around, we usually have to move two arrows at a time and the negative charge pushes electrons away from it. You would never want to push electrons towards a negative charge 
negative charges repel electrons. So to illustrate this, think about the pair of electrons on this negatively charged carbon moving towards this pi bonded atom. We can't just stop after one pair of electrons moves or we'd have five bonds to that same carbon. So a second arrow happens to break that pi bond at the same time as we move the pair of electrons. Now over here we have an interesting case. We can move this pair of electrons towards either of the two pi bonds that are beside represented either by the blue or the green arrows. And then here's this negative charge here. We can push the electrons up towards that carbon. Two arrows at a time in each case. That will lead to this second set of products, or resonance contributors rather, shown in the second column. Now in this case, we don't have any additional pi bonds next to the negative charge to move. All we could do is push the electrons back to go back to that contributor. But in the case of this bottom structure, we can still move the electrons towards the pi bond towards its left. Or we can push that pair of electrons towards this oxygen on the right. And then we would get these two different products from those two different possibilities. And now you see how you can move negative charges around to get the resonance contributors as well. And this should have a negative charge, not a hydrogen.